Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, we call these bones to live, call these lungs to see. Hey guys, we miss hanging out with you so very much, but thankfully this is our last week virtual. So here's a few things you need to know as we come back next week. First of all, this Sunday, Operation Christmas Child boxes are due. So bring those with you to church or send them with your parents. We hope that you picked one up to stuff. Second, talking about stuffing, we're gonna stuff our faces next week for Thanksgiving feast. So come ready to eat with your small groups, um, we're gonna social distance, we're gonna do all the things that we can to enjoy a meal together, but still be pretty COVID friendly. So we hope you'll join us next week, 7 to 8.30 p.m. See you there. Hello, my name is Steve Zook, and this is my wife, Cindy. Uh, we've been attending St. Mark, oh, wow, since about 2004. So I'll let you do the math on that one. Um, <laughs> Uh, I am a teacher at Jimtown Junior High School, 7th and 8th grade, and Cindy is the office manager at our church in the office. Uh, I'm supposed to tell a fun fact. Uh, fun fact is that we now have 10 grandchildren. I know we don't look that old, yes. but we have 10 grandchildren <laughs> yes. from uh, ages uh, about, what, three weeks mm -hmm. to, uh, to 10 years old. So. So storms, we're supposed to talk about the theme of storms. Yes, we are. So as I was thinking about the storms of life that I've come through, I couldn't help but think of weather storms that I've experienced. So have you ever heard your grandparents or maybe even your great grandparents talk about the Palm Sunday tornadoes of 1965? Anybody? <laughs> well, I was seven years old in 1965 on that Palm Sunday when 47 tornadoes ripped through the Midwest. I only remember three details of that day. One, my mom was a nurse and we had to leave Sunday evening service early. We had Sunday evening services back then. We had to leave early because the hospital had called all of 
the churches in the area and asked for any off-duty personnel to come to the hospital to help tend to the high number of injured people. I remember, secondly, I remember standing in our yard with my dad after we dropped my mom off at the hospital and looking at the scary yellow, greenish, awful sky. And then thirdly, I remember standing with my back up against the kitchen wall, being absolutely terrified and not thinking there was any other safer place except that kitchen, because that was a, a special place. Just a few miles south and east of our house in Dunlap, which is about where Concord High School is, 45 people were killed that day. And before that day, I don't remember ever preparing for a tornado, a tornado at home or at school. But after that tragic day, people began to take storms and tornadoes very serious about preparing for storms and tornadoes. One of our neighbors even built a storm shelter under his backyard. And our home was built on a concrete slab with no basement. So we had to hide in a closet if there was a storm or my favorite place was our cast iron bathtub. And we would just <laughs> slink way down in there. <laughs> so <clears throat> at school, we began doing tornado drills. And now schools in Indiana are required by law to hold storm drills every fall and every spring. People in the Midwest know that it is important to be prepared for storms. We teach about storms in school. We encourage families to have a safety plan and to keep emergency supplies in case of a bad storm or tornado. But weather-related storms aren't the only storms that we should prepare for. Just as we know the Midwest is a breeding ground for terrible storms, we also know that life can be filled with storms. Job says in Job 5.7, Yet man is born for trouble as surely as the, fly, as the sparks fly upward. And Job, there's a man that knows about storms. Many of us have faced or will face physical, emotional, relational, or spiritual storms. Storms involving illness or broken relationships, financial hardships, or loss of loved ones. Our family, like many families, has faced difficulties, difficult storms of life. One storm, however, like the Palm Sunday tornadoes, stands out among them all as the most unexpected and violent storm of all. The summer before the storm struck had been a time of strong spiritual growth for me. My prayer times grew more meaningful. I spent more time and deeper study in God's word. The summer was capped off with our annual stay at Brown City Family Camp in the Thumb of Michigan. It was a great time of spiritual refreshment. Our oldest son, Bobby, was at a spiritual high of his own. At the time, he was 17 years old, and at Brown City Camp in August of 2002, he had a life-changing encounter with Christ. He had given his life to Christ at a young age, but God had filled him with the Holy Spirit at that camp. It just seemed to flow out of him. And then the storm struck. On Labor Day weekend, just two weeks into Bobby's senior year, we visited the new home of some dear friends of ours in Burn, Indiana. They lived on a small man-made lake in a new neighborhood. We spent Saturday afternoon enjoying food and then swimming and paddling a boat on the lake. But in the midst of the splashing and fun, I suddenly realized that I hadn't seen Bobby for some minutes. At first we thought he was hiding because he was quite the prankster. But after searching everywhere in and around the house and calling his name, we began to suspect the worst, that he was under the water. 911 was called and we began searching the deepest part of the water. Help soon arrived. I had been letting myself sink to the bottom and bounce back up and then down again over and over to try to find him. But it was at least 45 minutes since we had seen him when my foot finally touched the cloth of his swimsuit. I dove to the bottom and found his ankle and pulled him up. The first responders took over and began trying to revive him as they whisked him to the hospital. But we all knew that unless God chose to do a miracle, he was gone. He had been under too, too long. The paramedics and the hospital staff worked and worked on him with no response at all. After 45 minutes and with our consent, they stopped their efforts. I've tried to come up with some way to describe the pain of that terrible day. There doesn't seem to be words that can adequately do the job. The closest I've come to is this. It was as if Without the slightest hint or warning, someone just grabbed one of my arms and legs and ripped it from my body and flung it into the universe. We had been hit with an unforeseen and sudden and violent storm. 
I remember a lot of things from the first couple of weeks, but most of September and all of October and November are lost to me. I do remember I tried hard to dive into the scripture, but I found it too difficult to concentrate on reading. So one of the things that helped me get through though, I think, was preparation. That summer I had spent more time in the word, more time in prayer, more time under good teaching. And then there was the outpouring of prayer from friends and people I had never met. People literally from all over the world were praying for us. And then of course, there's God's amazing grace. We also declared out loud to God and to ourselves, to the enemy, and did this several times out loud. I am trusting God in this. I don't like it. I don't want it. <laughs> but God, I trust you. And we said it so we could hear it, so God could hear it, and so Satan could hear it and know that we were trusting in God. Cindy recently found this definition of faith, and I love it. I believe it's spot on. Faith is clinging to our confidence in the character of God, even when we can't understand. And believe me, I didn't understand. <laughs> Let me say that again. Faith is clinging to our confidence in the character of God, even when we can't understand. The morning after Bobby died, two hymns came strongly into my head. Great is thy faithfulness and the solid rock. The verse of the solid rock that spoke most to me was, his oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. And believe me, it really felt like everything around me was giving away. You know, sometimes God chooses to stop and calm a storm, and sometimes he does not. But whether he stops the storm or not, he is with us. In fact, that's one of his names, Emmanuel, God with us. In Matthew chapter 7, excuse me, in Matthew chapter 8, we are told of Jesus sleeping in a boat when without warning, a furious storm came upon them. I'm going to ask Cindy to read that story. Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. The Gospel of Mark Chapter 4, verse 37 through 39 also records this story and reports it this way. There's a phrase in here that I especially like, so this is why I want her to read this one. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet! Be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. So the disciples said, don't you even care that we're about to drown? And don't we feel that way sometimes in the midst of a, of a storm? But where was Jesus? He was right there with him, right there with him, God with us. I think that that is the most important part of the story. More than the act of calming the storm and that amazing power that he had, it's the fact of Jesus' presence with his disciples, God with us. The last words that Jesus spoke on earth to his disciples are found in Matthew 28, verse 20. He said, And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Always, even in storms. Yes, we need to prepare for storms in the weather and the storms that will come into our lives. But the most important part of that preparation is being grounded in Christ, Christ the solid rock. The hymn writer states in the solid rock, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Before the storm hits, you need to decide where your hope is. Before the winds begin to howl, you need to be standing 
on the solid rock. The prophet loudly proclaims his trust in God and states the source of his joy in the last verses in the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 17 through 19. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. So if you are facing storms right now, you can be confident in the character of God to see you through, even if you don't understand.